All right, so uh, I apologize for the audio situation. Anyway, uh, so that's a sample of three pathways in two high schools. We have 11 comprehensive high school in East Ayin High School District, and two of those high schools are in District 8, Evergreen Valley High School and Silver Creek High School. So I brought some um, information sheets that's out there Currently, we just started a brand new pathway, career pathway, computer science engineering at Evergreen Valley High School. So that has to do with programming and so forth. The other two pathways are at Silver Creek High School, business entrepreneur, entrepreneurship and computer science. So essentially, in our district, if you are familiar with our vision, we want to graduate students with, uh, that are college and career ready. And in our pathway, our career pathway, uh, we do, we're doing exactly that. So uh, these courses are embedded in the student's um, schedule, regular schedule, and they're in a, uh, what we call a small learning community. So they are, uh, the, the, those CTE teachers are partnered with the core teachers. And all the teachers share the same students and they work together on projects and so Mr. Ellison would be working with his math teacher and that's why he's so familiar with geometry and the theorems and so forth and that's because um, the teachers are working together to plan around the project so if they're building a roof or you know so putting struts in um, the teacher would be working on that unit to help them out so um, so the pathway is not just connecting students into real world um, experience. We are also trying to connect with the colleges. So uh, Mr. Jer uh, Allison also mentioned that we are working with San Jose City College, Evergreen Valley College, and in his case, San Jose, um, Stanford University. Um, he's currently working, we're currently working with Stanford. Who knew Stanford has a, a doctoral degree in construction? Right. And so uh, our teachers are working with uh, the Stanford doctoral students to, uh, to work with our students. Uh, and another time I'll come and tell you more about that. In fact, I'll bring some of our teachers. But with regards to Silver Creek and Evergreen, um, the students, so the program at Evergreen is fairly new. It just started um, like half of last year. So this year would be the first full year. And so we're building the team of teachers. Uh, around the computer science teacher. And Kathy's here so she can attest to the fact that we are also partnering with the elementary school district in this area, Evergreen um, Elementary School District, to um, bring some of the CTE funding through the Eastside Alliance. So we're part of the Eastside Alliance, uh, the funding to the middle school. So currently, uh, last year I worked with um, the associate superintendent, Mr. Derek Vera, over at Evergreen, to put uh, a a program at not sure where, uh, Leva, Leva Middle School. So at Leva, um, there is a parent group over there that created a foundation, and the parents, uh, actually the two parents, so are so thankful they went and got their two CTE credentials, and they work with the uh, students. Uh, we have a summer bridge program. So uh, the student learned um, entrepreneurship through the partnership with um, NIFTI, which is the National Teaching and Entrepreneurship to Students, uh, Association of, to Teach uh, That to the Students. So, so that program is at Silver Creek, and we brought the same program to the middle school in the summer to introduce them to the business camp that we have. So um, this year we have 20 middle school student from Leyva who will be coming into Silver Creek who went to that program. So that we call the uh, internship light because the peer foundation agreed to um, use their, some of the funding to uh, give student a $100 gift card as time uh, to support them. To, uh, speaking of internships, so all of our students in um, the Pathways. We have about 26 now across the east side. Um, 
as a sophomore or 16 year old, they qualify to um, as, um, apply to become uh, become interns. So with the, uh, the internship program, we were lucky enough to be able to partner with the Silicon Valley Organization, formerly known as the Chamber of Commerce, and the City of San Jose through their Workforce Development, um, Work the Future Foundation. So SEO goes and uh, solicit companies within their membership to see if they do want to provide internship positions in their company. And the city of San Jose has agreed to pay the interns. So it's a win-win-win situation for our student. Um, they get to go to do interns, to be interns at a company. We, we have interns at LinkedIn, we have interns at Comcast, uh, Kaiser Permanente, uh, just to name a few of the big ones. We have smaller companies um, that students are interns. Our district tech and interns. Um, and the students, uh, so one of the charge for our partners is that the internship program has to reflect their interests in the pathway. So for example, with Kaiser, the student, uh, mostly from Andrew Hill High School, we have a health and human services pathway. So we try to place those students at Kaiser. And uh, likewise, at the business uh, pathway here, um, Silver Creek, we try to place them in uh, the pathway uh, in the internship that has to do with you know, their business interests, entrepreneurial stuff. Um, we have a hospitality pathway at Oak Grove High School. And so Hayes Mansion, the Hilton downtown, uh, all have our interns, just so that they can um, get that experience. Because the idea is not only to prepare the student for a um, career, but as you know, if you have teenagers, or if you did have teenagers, it's it's difficult for them to, like, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer, and then they end up being a doctor or a lawyer. It's often the case that they change their mind. And with the cost of college nowadays, it's very expensive when a student changed his or her mind after having paid all that money to go to college, and then say, I, this is not a career for me. So we want our student to graduate, not only be career ready, but also to uh, have a, a, a informed, make informed decision about that career, whatever path they're choosing. And it's not just the, when we talk about like construction, I always use construction as an example because as parents, you say, why, why construction? It's, first thing come to your mind is hammer and nail, but actually in construction, the business is, yes, there is that, aspect of it, but there is all the engineering, all the architectural, all the construction management, all require a college degree. And so our career pathways kind of prepare the students to have all those options. Um, so that's career technical education in a, a nutshell. So uh, I don't know if I, do you have any questions? I have my card and the three um, pathways information sheet Yes, sir. Mr. Leon, how are you? Hi. Are students from other schools able to transfer to Evergreen or Silver Creek if they like the program there, which their whole school does not have? So currently, the only school that do not have a magnet program, because that would be a magnet situation, is Evergreen Valley uh, High School, only because the school itself is impacted. Um, we have more, we're serving more students than um, their you know, space. Um, but, you know, we have, for example, uh, you saw the um, animation teacher um, speak. Uh, you didn't hear him speak, but he was there. Um, uh, Mr. Lawrence Cases, he is uh, the animation teacher over at Mount Pleasant High School. And that's, uh, by the way, that is an award-winning um, uh, program. He, uh, we recruit him from Electronic Arts. So he is uh, a principal designer at Electronic Arts, the gaming company, makes the games, and he returned to teach. Our former um, teacher there, Mr. Um, Sample, um, we, we recruited Lawrence to come 
So it's a very good program. So student, and that is a magnet program. So students from all across the district. We have the magnet program, uh, a magnet night or fair uh, this year, in Jan um, January 24th at Independence High School. So we invite all incoming freshmen to come to that night to see all of our teachers will be there and talk about their programs. And the ones that are magnet schools will then the students can apply to the magnet school. The answer to your question is generally yes. Okay. Uh, most of the time, students are able to do that. They have to stay in the magnet program. If they drop out of the magnet program, like they go to Mount Pleasant and get an animation program and they drop out of it, then they'll be returned to their, the school that they're supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a lot of movement within the district of students going to other schools. Evergreen is impacted, doesn't have a magnet program for that reason. There isn't any reason to have one to draw students to that school. But we have a lot of movement for uh, students to that school. Yes, we do. And so we, we get a lot of requests all the time. Yes, sir. Uh, for students that are in these career pathway programs, approximately how much time is spent in those classrooms and how much time is spent in more traditional learning environments? So it's just a regular schedule, of, let's say a six period day. So the, the CTE class would be just one period of the six period day. So the student is not pulled out or anything like that. No. So it's within their daily schedule. You might want to mention that we do have 600 students that, uh, which are referred to as Metro Ed or Silicon Valley Career Technical Education. And in that case, they're doing about half a day. That's correct. Uh, so career technical education. So those uh, students are bused to uh, the, uh, the center of Houston. And so there's more focus and they're doing, like Mr. Beal mentioned, three, uh, three hours of you know, focus CTE learning. And then they're, they do the rest of their classes at their homeschool. Yes, sir. Do you have an articulation uh, agreement with the community colleges? Yes, we do. So um, thank you for asking. Uh, so with Evergreen Valley uh, College and San Jose City College, we have uh, an understanding. So we're working right now on dual enrollment credits. What that means is the classes that students are taking at the high school, if it's agreed with the colleges, the student will receive college credit for that class. So for example, currently we're working on the automotive um, because Evergreen Valley College has an automotive program. So we're working with that staff, our teacher and our staff working with their teacher to come up with a curriculum where uh, I think it's auto 101 for 102 for them and the last, the capstone class for us for independence. And if the student took that class and then that and signed up at Evergreen, that student automatically has, I think it's three units uh, for for the automotive track at Evergreen. Uh, and we're doing that for making the courses and uh, the CTE courses. So San Jose City College is the construction program. So they have a very strong construction program and construction management. Yes, and so we're working, our construction teacher developing a course together with, with their teacher. Mission College, we have a connection with, uh, through the Health and Human Services, so actually our seniors are taking, are being taught by one of their teachers, the nursing, uh, the element, the nursing certificate. So last summer we have 22 students who took that class and, and received the credit. Yes, sir. Sir or ma'am? I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask are your students, when they graduate from high school, is your goal for those who want to go the track of working? Are they prepared for that work or are you preparing them for at least two years of college? So we're preparing students to have, at graduation or in the last semester of graduation, they can be prepared and qualify to go to a four-year college. If they choose to go to a two-year college, they can. And in some cases, when they are in some of these pathways, they have certificates that will allow them to enter the workforce while they're going to. Um, so we did a survey of all of our students. 
And it turns out 40% of our students plan to work and go to college. So uh, I don't know how that's going to pan out for them, but that's what they plan to do uh, right now. So we want to prepare them to be able to do any of those things. Can I add to that that 81% of Eastside graduates are in college within one year after, uh, after graduating from high school? And 91% of those are in college a second year after that. We're going to continue to monitor those statistics. Now, the bulk of those are in community colleges. And Tim is correct. Most of them are, are working while they're going to school. But that also leads to the importance why we have a, uh, an agreement with the city of San, with uh, San Jose State University called the Spartan Promise, which basically says that if our students meet all the requirements, the basic requirements of San Jose State, they will, in fact, be accepted at San Jose State not into necessarily a specialty program at San Jose State, but in general admission to San Jose State. And uh, last year we sent over 1,200 students to San Jose State. So um, it's a overall east side. So we want to prepare students who are very well prepared, right? So that they're, that they can be flexible in their planning and not be like, I can't do that because I, I, I'm not sure I can do that. Yes, sir. Yeah. As, uh, as they're dual enrolled, uh, what's the maximum amount of credits can they earn? And can they fulfill, say, a full year of community college while graduating? So, 15 units of college is the maximum that uh, the students can, can have. Um, yeah. So, so the, 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 the advantage of the dual enrollment uh, is that, um, so you probably heard of the AP Advanced Placement Program. Um, students take those courses and then they have to take an exam which costs $85, $95. And they have to score a minimum of a three or four or five in order for, to, for that class to count. And certain colleges require, don't even take it, certain AP courses or require that they pass with a four or five. In any case, you know, it, it's, it still requires students to do another step to get in. Do enrollment, it, you know, for some of the students, they, it's just a class that they're already taking and it's recognized by that junior college. And so the, the credit goes on the transcripts. There is no fee, there is no test. The only test that they would be taking would be the normal test, the midterm or whatever that the, that class would, would be giving its kids anyway. Any other, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, So magnet program specifically is for, so most of the magnet, all of the magnet program are for, to go to our um, career technical education with two exceptions. One is the international baccalaureate program at Andrew P. Hill High School and the ROTC program at Oak Grove High School. So those are non-CTE but there, one is more specialized in the ROTC and the other one is IB, which is more academic. The rest of the magnet program is CTE focused. Which are the pathways that you're talking about. So all of our CTE programs are pathways, okay. right? Um, but not all pathways are magnet, if, if that makes sense. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Appreciate it.